Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, this is Redberry Rio here, and welcome back to another Civil Air Patrol video. In today's video, I'm going to be doing a summary of the CAP Regulation 60-2 and talk a little bit about some of the summary points that are included within the Cadet Protection Policy Summary Guide, and I will be linking that down below in addition to the regulation. I do plan to make a few different videos discussing scenarios and challenging you all to think about the Cadet Protection Policy and how we together can help enforce while providing a positive learning environment that is safe and cares for the well-being of cadets while maintaining positive interactions between cadets and senior members to promote positive supervision and mentorship. So who has to complete the cadet protection training? The people who are required to complete this are 18 or older, no matter what your membership status is. So if you are a senior member or if you're a cadet, you are required to complete the training through access. So in terms of professionalism, physical, emotional, and sexual abuse is not tolerated within Civil Air Patrol whatsoever. And you are expected to always abide by CPP or the Cadet Protection Policy at all CAP activities. No exceptions. All adult leaders and cadets who are over the age of 18 are required to complete the Cadet Protection Basic course. And there is an advanced course available for commanders, deputies, and like directors of cadet programs to go a little bit more in depth and dive into the program. So let's talk a little bit about these standards of practice. Cadet activities are required to be planned at least two weeks in advance and they should be announced on a web-based calendar. At Civil Air Patrol activities, we are required to have two deep leadership, which means there are two adult leaders required to participate and attend in the activity when there are cadets involved. And there are only some occasions where there might be exceptions, such as if you're flying and there is a trusted flight instructor or a flight mentor that there's only space for like two members in the plane in terms of weight and balance and just like availability. That's more of a gray area, but in most instances, you will have two senior members, but because of limitations with the aircraft and everything, then you've just got the one cadet with the one senior member. Meeting with cadets one-on-one -on -one is okay. You really shouldn't be doing it. It's, it's better to have someone else present, but if you really must meet one-on-one, -on -one, then the door must be left open or within the line of sight of other members who are in the general area. When giving a ride to a cadet, there must be a third person present unless there is a prior relationship with that cadet or they are related as family members. Activities that just go beyond the weekly meetings are required to have a permission slip signed by a parent and turned in at the activity, or at least present on them and available to show the leadership at the activity. Sometimes they don't collect them, but they need to have a signed permission slip from a parent. Every cadet at activities should receive a fair amount of attention with no favoritism or bias towards specific ones. For overnight activities, there is a requirement to have at least two senior members, and it's recommended that there be a male and female senior member who are present. In terms of shower times, senior members and cadets may not shower at the same time and use the bathrooms at the same time. Like if there is, let's say, a barracks that has two floors, senior members and cadets may not share the same floor. The senior members can be on the top floor and the cadets can be on the bottom floor, but they may not share unless they are immediate family members. So let's say that a senior member and a cadet need to communicate in some capacity outside of the regularly scheduled weekly meetings. A third person is required to be included on those communications. And there is an exception that like if it's a quick one-on-one -on -one text of an official nature, then it's okay. But that that isn't very frequent because normally it turns into a conversation. So a third person would need to be included on that. And that could be a parent, that could be another cadet, that could be a senior member. It's whoever they feel comfortable in having as that third person who can sit in on that conversation. So let's talk a little bit about training intensity. There are some instances that because of Civil Air Patrol's military training style environment, that intensity can go a little bit too high. For example, at an encampment that I was at once, there was a failure on the student's part where they had not properly prepared for an inspection and their barracks were a mess. Now, instead of maybe having a discussion and approaching the situation rationally, one of the cadet officers 
just started screaming at the entire barracks. They said, hit the line! And everyone got next to their bunks and at like their little spots that they're required to stand on. And they were yelled at for a significant amount of time. Now, this was a couple years ago, so it's not as frequent that this happens, but it was an inappropriate intensity for an extended period of time. If the cadet staff member is going overboard, it's okay to correct them and have a discussion on intensity and making sure that what they're doing is appropriate to the situation. Um, typically, if, if it's like a younger cadet staff member, then an older cadet staff member might intervene and kind of pull them aside and have that feedback discussion. And it would be good as the senior member who is overseeing and like witnessing what's going on to stand in that conversation, just to provide your insight as kind of like the in loco parentis, just so that that cadet understands that that behavior isn't necessarily appropriate in that setting and a few steps that they can take to address that situation afterward. So going through that example, after that cadet staff, after the cadets had been yelled at, um, the higher up in the cadet staff leadership actually like sat everyone down on, on their foot lockers and on their bunks and everything and had an honest discussion about what had just happened why that may not necessarily have been the best approach, but the reason why it happened, and discussing how the team can come together, work together to really bolster their strength as a team, and get ready for the next inspection. And so rather than taking that experience and, and saying like, this is acceptable, it was made clear to the students in that squadron that just screaming for a long time is not appropriate and it's not acceptable. And by providing them with that summary discussion of what happened and steps that they themselves can take in the future to help their team to come together and meet those objectives that the cadet staff were looking for, but what they probably would not have accomplished just by having that screaming session, was a good way to inspire the students to come together rather than feel bad and just not have a great time that day. Because if, if the cadets had just been yelled at, and then no one really addressed it and it was like, well, you guys got yelled at, you screwed up. Would that inspire you if you were just screamed at for like 30 minutes? I don't think so. I wouldn't be inspired, I would be upset, I would be annoyed, I would be angry, I would be frustrated. I would feel like I didn't, I didn't mess up this much to deserve being yelled at. So in that situation, that, that older cadet staff member who had that discussion with the students, and with the cadet staff member tried to remedy it and they were able to kind of bring everyone together towards a positive direction to inspire them further throughout the week. So let's say that problem persists where that cadet staff member is using overly high intensity at inappropriate times and maybe even using corporal punishment like making them do 100 push-ups because they didn't do well during inspection, then that should be treated as a boundary concern and the activity director or the commander at the activity should be kept apprised of what is going on and what the situation is. In terms of special environments, during orientation rides, you should try to have three members present where there's like two cadets, one in the front, one in the back, and then one senior member in the front. But if there's an instance that only one cadet is available, then that's okay. It's just more of a gray area because you do want to try to have that rule of three still going on. If a cadet is waiting less than 30 minutes to participate in their O ride, then it's acceptable to have one adult leader there. But if it starts to be more than 30 minutes, then you do need to have a second senior member present for that too deep leadership. For fraternization, there is a very clear line between adult members, adult leaders, and cadets. There should not be any dating or intimate relationships between cadets and senior members. Now, I know there are some instances where a cadet becomes a senior member and then their partner is still a cadet. CAP really frowns upon those kind of relationships because the cadet is still protected by that cadet protection policy and there, there are a whole slew of problems that can come with that. So really, under no circumstances are cadets and senior members allowed to be in those sorts of relationships. If someone were to commit a boundary concern that you observe, then pull them aside and have that discussion on why it was a boundary concern. For example, at let's say an activity 
there is a cadet who is feeling unwell and everyone's outside and one of the senior members is like, oh, this cadet isn't feeling well, let's take them inside to this building that has air conditioning. So that senior member, just one-on-one, -on -one, takes that cadet into the building. That would be a boundary concern because that senior member is taking that cadet behind a closed door, one-on-one. -on -one. And so to help alleviate that, there are a few steps that we could take. Make sure that door is open have the senior member be accompanied by a third member, whether that be a cadet or another adult member, or have the one cadet who is not feeling well escorted by two cadets while they're still in the line of sight of the senior member's supervision. Now, if boundary concerns persist, then the commander should take disciplinary actions with the member. And if you have a reasonable suspicion of cadet abuse, first make sure the cadet is safe and then notify the wing commander. So that was a more in-depth summary on some of the different topics covered within the Cadet Protection Policy in CAP Regulation 60-2. Again, if you do have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching, and that is all, folks. Until next time, toodles.